I guess at this point, the question that many of you may have in mind is whether this vision is realistic. For us in NEDA, the answer is a resounding yes. It is possible with the right policies. We recognize, however, that government has a critical role to play in supporting the realization of these aspirations. Government needs to provide enabling conditions to help Filipinos build up their resources, including physical, intellectual, and financial, by fostering sustained economic growth, investing in people, and protecting them against instability. The government also needs to provide the appropriate rules of the game and ensure that these are enforced fairly and equally. Sustained public investments to close the country's infrastructure gap will be important in removing bottlenecks that have limited the potential of various sectors of the economy and in allowing the benefits of growth to be spread more widely. We also need to provide an environment that fosters competition and rewards innovation as they are critical for long-term growth. Government also needs to sustain public investments in the country's most important asset, its people. Investments in health and education will ensure the availability of a healthy, highly trainable and skilled labor force, allow the poor to benefit more from growth, and foster the development of a more entrepreneurial society. The state also needs to adequately protect the citizens against social, environmental, and economic instability. This includes the provision of protection against peace and security threats, as well as health and environmental risks. As regards institutions, the FGD and survey results clearly indicate the strong demand for a clean, efficient, and service-oriented government. Filipinos believe that eliminating corruption is important in achieving a better future, not only large-scale grand corruption, but also small-scale petty corruption, the kind that victimizes the poorest among us. Ease and efficiency of government transactions is likewise considered important. Empirical studies indicate that with the right policies, improvements in productivity and efficiency can triple our gross national per capita income to about 11,000 US dollars in 25 years allowing majority of our people to enjoy nearly high-income country standards of living. Note that over the last 33 years, 1981 to 2014, we were only able to raise our real per capita income by 1.8 times. In contrast, without reforms, per capita income can only grow to around 5,000 US dollars over a period of 25 years. That is, not even double the current level of 3,500 US dollars. The impact on poverty will depend both on the robustness of economic growth as well as how it is distributed. Weak income growth coupled with elevated disparity in income can weigh down the efforts to eradicate poverty. On the other hand, if inequality declines significantly, poverty cuts are deeper and the process of eradicating poverty is shorter. The analysis suggests that if strong growth is accompanied by reductions in inequality, poverty could be eradicated before 2040. In other words, this will only be obtained if economic growth continues to be robust and inclusive. What does having a per capita income of 11,000 US dollars mean? A concrete example would be Malaysia, whose per capita income was at $11,120 as of 2014. It actually took Malaysia 33 years to triple its real per capita income. Note that using the new $1.90 a day international extreme poverty line, Malaysia has managed to reduce extreme poverty incidence below 1%. We therefore believe that by 2040, it is very possible that the Philippines shall be a country where all citizens are free from hunger and poverty, have equal opportunities, enabled by fair and just society that is governed with order and unity. A nation where families live together, thriving in vibrant, culturally diverse and resilient communities. The road to realizing this vision is filled with challenges, however. Firstly, it needs to survive a change in administration four times over the next 25 years. It will also require a lot of patience 
as not all our ambitions will be achievable immediately nor simultaneously. We will also have to sustain the momentum over a period of 25 years under changing conditions, requiring adjustments and flexibility in our strategies. So what does this imply in terms of our next steps? It means we will need to build a broad constituency for the vision and the reforms needed to attain it, among others. This will involve a good communication strategy to communicate the vision to all stakeholders so as to gain widespread recognition and acceptance. The vision also needs to be translated into specific goals, measurable targets, and intermediate milestones while allowing for flexibility in strategies. We will need to take into consideration the country's international commitments under the 2030 Sustainable Development Goals or the SDGs. The strategies needed to achieve these targets will then be the subject of our next four Philippine development plans. Institutional arrangements may also have to be adjusted to ensure horizontal and vertical policy coherence and sustained implementation. As I mentioned earlier, it is clear to us that government needs to play its role in making this vision a reality. But clearly, we cannot do this alone. We will need everyone's help and cooperation.